Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be making a UI management system in Unity Engine. It's going to be very easy to use and will require a very few amount of code to be actually implemented. So to get started we need to create a canvas. You can do so by right clicking on the hierarchy and selecting UI and clicking on canvas. This will create a canvas and an event system. So after that, we need to create a scripts folder and create two scripts, one called view and another called view manager. Let's first double click on the view script to open it in Visual Studio. Once the script is open, we need to make a public abstract class and call it view and it should derive or inherit the main mono behavior um, base class. So we need a couple of methods right now. First one is a public abstract void initialize and the second one is going to be a public virtual void height which is going to call game object that set active to false and a public virtual void show which is going to do the inverse of the hide method show the game object or set the game object to be active <coughs> excuse me so the use of these methods is going to be simply the initialize one is going to be for initializing buttons or scroll views on our view. The hide method is going to be used to hide our view and the show method is going to obviously show our view. The reason the first one is abstract because each view needs to be always initialized. Okay, And the reason the second two methods two other methods are virtual is because for example those views that need to be hidden and perform some kind of operation for example you have a settings menu when you hide it or when you show it you would like to save or load data to the desk or do whatever so that's why they are virtual now after creating the after writing the following code we go back in unity and wait for it to compile our code changes then we go into the a view, uh, sorry, into the scripts folder and create a view manager script and double click on it. Once we're in the script, we're going to type private static view manager. Give it the S instance name. This is going to be basically a singleton reference to the view manager class. So each scene is going to have a, an instance of the view manager class and we're going to assign it on the awake method. say this instance equals this. Once we do this, we need uh, some instance fields. First, a serialized field of type view. It's called a starting view. Another serialized field of type view array called views. A private view called current view and a private, <coughs> excuse me, read only stack of view call this view history and initialize it in the sorry, initialize it in line so the starting view is going to be the view that is v first shown to the player when the game starts say for example the main menu or the HUD for the in-game player and the views array is going to be a list of all of the views that we are able to manipulate for example the main menus, starting menus etc. The current view is just going to be a reference to the currently shown view to the player and the history view stack is going to be basically the history of the views that we have opened for example if I go from the main menu to the settings menu and I would like to go back this is where the history stack will be used for so let's create uh, some static methods the first one is going to be a public static t get view which will allow us to search for a view of a specific type we say where t is a view and we use a for loop to iterate over our views mistake over here 
So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, when we loop, we <coughs> excuse me, very sorry. We check for the instance that views at the current index and see if it is the needed type or the view we actually need. We simply say if the the view at the current index is of the type we specify over here, and we simply store this uh, view type in a variable if it is of the required type. And we simply return the the key view. Otherwise, we return null. For example, if we didn't find the view, or if the user didn't include the view in the views array, now we need a public static void called show. It's going to take a uh, generic parameter of type t. We're going to say where t is view. We're going to give it a parameter of type boolean and call it remember. So that it set its default value to true, so this becomes an optional parameter, meaning you can or cannot write it. Um, so let's go here and do a for loop and iterate over our views array. We check if the current view, sorry, if the view at the current index is t, and we don't need to store the type of the view this time. And we do a couple of checks first if the current view is not equal to null, and if we should remember it, we say is instance dot history dot push the current view, and after that we hide the current view using the hide method implemented earlier <coughs> excuse me and after that we simply set sorry say view s instance dot views the current index dot show and then we set the current view to this view or the view of the current index so that's pretty much it for the first show method now we need to implement another one that takes a reference to a view instead of a generic parameter, which is going to be useful in some scenarios. Public, sorry, public static void show, and the boolean called remember as well. And now we iterate over, sorry, we don't need to iterate over our views, we simply check if the instance that current view is not equal to null and check if we should remember it and as we did above over here we push this current view to the history stack and we hide it like so and after that we set the current view to the view we want to show and before that we show that view so that's pretty much it for the sec second uh, show method. Now we need a method to go back if from uh, the current menu, like we said above over here. If I'm in the main menu and go to the settings menu, I would like to go back. I will be using the method we are about to write. So public static void show last. Just going to do if instance dot history dot count is not equal to zero so if we actually are able to go back or we have a recorded history of views we simply call the show method that takes in this instance dot history dot bob the bob method takes the last element you added to the stack and removes it from it and returns it so this is basically for example i have main menu then I go back, then I go to settings. Main is going to be pushed to the stack, so the stack is going to have main in it. And when we call Bob, 
the stack is going to remove main and return it. So that's pretty much the basic idea. So I have main, I go to settings, main is going to be pushed in the stack. When I call bop, main will be returned and the stack will be empty. So let's remove these comments now. These comments now. And let's in the show call over here, we need to say the remember parameter to false because you don't need to get stuck in a loop. So for example, I go to main and remember it and go to settings and remember it. When we cycle to just keep cycling between the last and current menu, last and current menu. So that's pretty much it for the view manager class. Now we need to implement it in the current scene. Let's go back in Unity. <coughs> Excuse me. And once it compiles our code, we need to create an empty game object and call it view manager. Set the top of our scene, reset its position, set its layer to UI. And let's add the view manager component. And in our canvas, we need to start by creating a simple main menu view and a simple settings view. So let's go ahead and create do this. So we need an empty game object, call it main menu. Set its um, anchor preset to stretch, okay, on both axes, and set all the left, top, right, and bottom uh, offsets to zero. Now let's create an image inside of it, or a couple of buttons. Let's go a button. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, Unity. So once we create the button, let's call it a st in the start button. Let's go with settings button. Okay. And let's set the text to settings. And let's set the button. Let's keep the button at its current position. Let's add a text for the title. So title text. Set it to anchor at the top of the screen. Set its height to 128 or it goes text 64. And let's do this. So our text is at the middle top of the screen. Let's align by geometry and center our text and set the size to best fit. Let's call it example. Or let's make it main menu. Okay. Now let's duplicate the main menu and have a settings menu. Let's hide the current main menu so it's not selectable and it's not visible. Let's say settings menu and let's go here, call this one in the back button. Let's change this text to back. And we just need to sorry disable both of these uh, objects now. And currently, there is not much use for both of them, so let's add some functionality to them. Functionality to them. Let's go right click on the scripts folder, create a new script, and call it main menu view. Wait for Unity to compile our changes. So, to compile the script creation, double click on it. So, we're going to remove all of the default code and inherit from the view class. We'll need to implement the abstract void initialize and we're going to add a reference to our button so serialize field private button start button and in the initialize method we simply say start button dot on click dot add listener view manager dot set or so you show the the settings menu view which we didn't create later, so let's go, sorry, we didn't create yet. Let's say settings menu view. And let's remove the useless namespaces. And let's go ahead in Unity and create this settings menu class. So settings menu view. 
Oops. Just wait for Unity to open the second instance of Visual Studio. Once we open it, we simply remove the default code and inherit from view as well. We need to implement the abstract class. Let's add a reference to our back, uh, back button. And let's, <coughs> excuse me, add a callback handler to the button on click. So on click dot add listener view manager dot show last, which will allow us to go back to the last view. As you can see over here now, it's fixed. Let's go back in Unity. Once it finished, it has finished completion. Let's go in the main menu and enable it add the main menu view script drag our settings button which we have incorrectly named here so let's fix this quickly let's go settings and let's go back in unity assign our button and let's go back here in the settings menu add the settings menu view script let's drag the back button and disable the settings menu the view manager let's go in the views list uh, array and drag the main menu and the settings menu and let's set our starting view to the main menu now for the starting view to actually show let's go in the view manager and go all the way up sorry all the way down and add a private void start we're going to iterate over all of our views and call views i dot initialize so we initialize the view then hide it initially so we call hide then simply we check if the starting view is not equal to null we show the starting view and we want to remember the current null view. Okay. <coughs> so let's copy the awake method from here to down here. And let's go in Unity. So once we have finished the compilation, you can see that when we run the game, the main menu view will be automatically shown. And when I press the settings button, I will go to the settings menu. And I press back, I will go back to the main menu. So this is useful because sorry, this system is useful and better than most of other um, UI management system I have used before, or UI management scripts I've used before. Is <coughs> excuse me, it allows you to initialize and order your views in any way you want, and you can also disable them initially and the view manager will handle their initialization and showing and hiding of them which is pretty useful and actually very efficient instead of having to always store a reference to the view at multiple areas or um, have to use an enum for example say an enum that has a list of all the possible views and you iterate over a list and you check if it's match if it matches or stuff like this so this is pretty simple as you can see it's just 95 and 11 lines so that's pretty much 106 lines of code and it's pretty efficient also and allows endless customizability so i just need to implement the view class and there is also a way you can use interfaces but i use view as a class for convenience so that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the video the source code will be included in a guest in the link in the description of the video thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one